Earlier today, I watched the latest episode in the Viceland series, Dark Side of the Ring. This fourth episode, titled The Last of the Von Erics, told the story in a 45 minute programme of one of professional wrestling's most famous or infamous families. Yes, there are lots of other wrestling families, the Guerreros, the Hearts, for example, but the Von Eriks, certainly due to what happened to them over their lives and career, I think their story will long, long live in the memory of professional wrestling. Now, like I've said before, these subjects have kind of been poured over by wrestling journalists, wrestling fans before. Um, I will say that this is a 45 minute, 44 really, minute uh, program and it kind of gives a summary of the story of the Von Erics. And I'm not saying this um, just to kind of give a plug to something else because I really would love, I do want people to watch the episode because it's a really good episode. But if you want to hear more in depth about them, then there's two DVD documentary things that I would suggest looking out. First of all, Heroes of World Class, the story of the Von Erics. Uh, this was released in the UK by Big Vision. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's still available. Um, whether you can get it online, I'm sure you get it, be able to get maybe somewhere. Uh, and there's also a WWE uh, documentary that's also available on the network, The Triumph and Tragedy of World Class Championship Wrestling. Uh, those two documents are a lot longer than this. This, um, this DVD set in total is five hours, but I think the documentary is only about an hour or so. Um, this, uh, the Heroes World Class documentary uh, runs about two hours, 50 minutes approximately. So that's a lot more in depth than this episode. But I mean, it's made for TV, this episode in particular. Um, so then there's a limit of, there's a time limit, but again, it's a really good episode. And like I said, it tells the story of the Von Erics, and this, the episode begins with basically recapping how the family kind of came together a little bit. Uh, tells, it kind of highlights the father, Fritz Von Erich, who um, was a wrestling heel, a bad guy in the 50s and 60s. Now, I kind of you know, kind of have to admire Fritz for what he did in the wrestling. Well, you have to really admire him for what he did in the wrestling business. And he was a huge star long before even this, before his sons came along and uh, started wrestling. He was a huge star in the 50s and 60s, playing a German heel. Uh, Bill from Berlin, Germany, Fritz von Erich was a feared heel. Uh, using uh, and inventing the iron, the iron claw, you know, the, the claw move. I'm not going to try and do it because he did that. Um, but, you know, he he was really a big heel, very, you know, very brave to be a bad guy. And, you know, you kind of get the feeling that Pritch really wanted, from the start of this episode, that Pritch really wanted to be a heel. And I think uh, Kevin says, he said, you know, if you want to be something in the wrestling business, you know, give it all you've got, and I think Fritz gave it really all he got, uh, all, all he had, even, um, to be that evil German, uh, that evil kind of Nazi German uh, character that he was, and obviously the Nazis were a political party, the rose to power, uh, especially in the, I'm not sure with the First World War, but certainly the Second World War, swept power with Hitler, and obviously caused the entire Second World War, pretty much, and... You know, to be a, a German heel in the 50s and 60s when feeling about both world wars, not just World War Two, but both wars because the second came out of the first, uh, it's such a very brave thing to do and he did have a lot of skill. I've not seen a huge amount of Fritz's wrestling, but everybody raves about uh, how great he was in the ring. So it wasn't just a cheap heat heel because you can still go cheap heat in this in wrestling business. You can go and say place A. You you're in place A, and you say, "Well, I'm in place A, but I've been to place B, and place B is so much better than place A. It still works." You can go in Scotland, say about England, England about Scotland. You can say about cities, countries, 
even areas Teesside's better than Aberdeenshire or whatever it still works to this day and anybody who doesn't believe that never really gone to a, a really local independent wrestling show because it still happens it still works it's very cheap very easy to do but it still works you see then hear about the family coming along you hear about Jack now Jack Adkisson some people may not realise he existed uh, sadly he died as a, just a six year old um, he was electrocuted um, very sadly and it's a very sad story I think it's the Kevin um, Von Eric I think kind of has a memory of that happening because uh, Jack was born in 52, Kevin was born in 57, uh, so two, he was about two years old, 18 months maybe, uh, when this happened and he remembers it. Uh, it was kind of a sign of things to come with the with the, the uh, Atkinsons or the Von Erics, so I'll call, I'll call them for the simplification of that. Um, you really hear about the boys growing up. Whether Brits was a bit of what we would call these days a helicopter parent, it's very, very difficult to judge, to be honest. Uh, you know, there are some parents that will really push their kids to in one particular direction um, towards being a dancer, a singer, uh, an athlete or something. It's very, very difficult to see, to see whether, without obviously being there day in, day out, to say whether... Uh, Fritz was really being that kind of fa uh, parent, or whether both whether the mother uh, was like that as well. It's very difficult. Both certainly all the children uh, were went towards athletics. Even Chris, who as we heard later on, uh, had several health problems and so forth, uh, and really I mean, did wrestle a little bit, but um, uh, wasn't really cut out to be an athlete or a wrestler. Uh, but certainly most of the boys went really towards uh, athletics like uh, Kevin, I think it is, who tried to pursue American football before getting a knee injury uh, and then going down the wrestling path, which happens quite a lot in professional wrestling. So we see the, we hear about them growing up and then getting into wrestling, getting some experience and of course um, becoming superstars uh, in World Class Championship Wrestling, which was based I think most of the shows are happened, I'll say a lot of them, happened in Dallas, Texas, uh, which was their local area, in the famous Sportatorium, uh, which others like Mick Foley and Stone Cold Steve Austin have also uh, wrestled at, which is no longer there. And I think it's the Heroes of World Class, this one, where you see, you get a little bit of a guide. I think both of them may feature a little bit, but certainly in one of them, you get a little bit of a tour of the Sportatorium, just before it gets knocked down. So you actually get to see inside the building, which had been abandoned for several years at that point. But you get to hear about the boys getting into wrestling, get some experience and becoming major stars. And obviously they had feuds with some of the biggest superstars in the world of wrestling at that time, like the fabulous Freebirds. Very famous uh, feud there. I will say that it's very difficult also, again, without being in that area uh, and without kind of being surrounded by it, uh, it must have been quite difficult, I think, for the guys uh, to be major superstars. I know Dallas is a big city and Texas is a huge state, but to be that well known, when I mean, we're talking the late 70s, early 80s, when wrestling was still hugely, hugely popular, uh, especially in the, uh, in the United States, um, to be so easily recognisable, and to be so well known, I mean, actually, I'm not going to tell the story, but Kevin gets into a very, very dark place after all these tragedies happen, and he's well known so much that it kind of saves him, actually, I would say. I would say being well known actually saves Kevin in the end, and you hear, can hear that story, actually. Literally saves his life, I think. Um, or at least certainly saves the path he's go he was going down. Uh, you can hear that near the end, I think it is, of the episode, so it's a really worthy story to kind of hear. Um, but, you know, to be amongst that mania, be that famous, and they really basically cl they carried World Class Championship Wrestling on their backs. That was They were the attraction. They were the what drew the crowds. Uh, it's no wonder they travelled all about Texas and wrestling two or three times a day. Um, at different shows, I mean, 
opening match, maybe a one event, and then getting in the car or a private plane, uh, a kind of chartered plane, and then flying me to another show somewhere else in Texas and wrestling perhaps, you know, the main event, um, which regularly happened in the 1970s and 80s, particular 80s for rest, different wrestlers, Ric Flair's done it before, Steamboat Hogan used to do it in the WWE, you know, um, so you it's it was impossible to really understand the mania and the the the, the popularity of the one Eric from it must have just been huge uh, at that point. Um, then of course the, uh, eventually the, it's kind of because this I was kind of summarising about the uh, uh, recent, eventually of course the tragedies happen, which is what a lot of people pay attention to, obviously, uh, and. Uh, and the first tragedy is David Von Erich, who passed away of uh, in uh, I think it is. Um, I was checking, but certainly, uh, basically, his um, yeah it was um, uh, enteritis. Yeah, intestinal inter enteritis. Uh, he passes away uh, during a, doing a tour for All Japan Pro Wrestling, which was um, at that point in nineteen eighty four was I think the biggest, certainly the biggest uh, Japanese promotion at the time, certainly one that a lot of the foreigners or gaijin went to, um, that they were that were well known for in, people like Bruiser Brody who was featured in, his sad um, death was featured in the a previous episode, he's amongst those who find David in the hotel room. To be honest I feel that it may have just been the enter enteritis that killed him. Uh, I, um, I've heard a few others feel, feel that, that uh, David felt un, uh, looked unwell prior to his trip to Japan, and though the Japanese style is very strong style, it's very stiff, it's very uh, physical style, and so it, I mean, some people have room have uh, common maybe there was a bad bump or just a bump that kind of caused it, and you know, was, some things that can happen, something can happen. Instantly, like Misara Misawa, Misawa, or it could take a while to to kind of show up on, uh, and somebody will collapse much later on. I mean, I've saw I watched documentaries um, following police officers and one gets attacked, uh, which is rewatched it a few weeks ago. A guy got a uh, police officer got attacked, refused to go to the hospital, felt all right, but then managed to dial a, a fellow officer. A while later, when he was making his way home, um, we felt unwell and collapsed, and ended up rushing to the hospital. Thankfully, he was all right. So sometimes these things can take a, a while to show up. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of more tragedies. Um, Mike uh, suffers a separated shoulder, gets a staph infection, and suffers brain damage from the 105 uh, degree Fahrenheit. I think this was at 42. Um, Degree Celsius, I think it is. I'm trying to remember all this stuff. Uh, fever and that certainly damaged his brain. I've seen at press conference. Uh, he's he's not one hundred percent there. And I've seen uh, interviews uh, that took pl with that place with him afterwards. And I think there's certainly some significant brain damage that happened. Um, you basically boiled, and your brain is basically your brain is a lot of water. So if you're literally boiling that, uh, you're but I know, I know it's not exactly high enough to physically boil because boiling is 100 degrees Celsius instead of 42, but still that's a significant rise for your body, for your brain. Uh, so I certainly feel that there was a, a major, from certainly from based behaviour that's described in the episode, I think there was some, certainly with rages and attacking a stop sign and attacking an empty car. Uh, I think there was, seemed to be, certainly a lot of, and that which can happen with brain damage, uh, very much a big change in his personality and his actions um, afterwards. Um, I don't really need to go through him, obviously he might end up uh, you know, taking his own life, so did uh, Chris and um, Kerry also after getting a run with WWE. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, Jim Cornette, and I kind of hate to sound some of these episodes, but like, um, um, oh, Jim Cornette's so right. Jim Cornette is, you know, so knowledgeable, which he is. I mean, he, he has been studying the wrestling business, as he said in this episode, for 50 years. And he's lived this business. He's lived the wrestling business for 
about 40 years now. Uh, you know, he literally has lived it. Uh, he's still living it. Going to MLW, um, various appearances, and uh, has wrote many books on different territories and presented DVDs on different territories. Uh, spoken to many people who were in the territories on those DVDs um, for various companies. Uh, you know, I think Jim Cornette is absolutely right in two, th well, two things. One of them is where he said, that, you know, he almost cried when he heard Kevin Von Erickson. I've heard Kevin Von Erickson, Kevin Addison, who's 90% of this, and I, I'll talk about that in a minute. He's 90% of that. You know, a lot of this stuff comes from him. There's not a lot of talking heads or interviews interviewees on this one. I think it's basically Jim Cornette and Kevin Monarch and David Manning um, who had to tell uh, Fritz that David had passed away and how David Manning did that, I don't know. I mean, And I will say, he says it before cellular, cellular phones, which was again 1984 when David passed, David Von Erich passed away. I'd say he did the right thing by even just by driving down and telling Fritz in person. That's the best thing. You can't really do such a thing over the phone. Um, to tell, uh, especially when the son is in Japan, you can't, in that situation, w where it's an unexpected death, you have to go and tell the person in person. Uh, so he did absolutely the right thing. Um, and I feel sorry for David Manning. He's been through a lot in the wrestling business as well. Um, uh, so, I, so a lot of the tragedies happen you know, to the David takes his own life, Mike Eventually takes his own life, Chris takes his own life, and obviously Kerry said after getting a run with WWE. Um, that is just a. It's sad because I think at that point, I'm just looking at the dates on the computer, it's down to. It was sadly down to Kerry and Kevin, and Kevin tries to convince Kerry not to harm himself, but sadly he does in 1993. Um, and it is sad because. Fritz not answering the phone because he was pouring concrete. I don't know whether Fritz could even have stopped Kerry, even if he tried. I don't know. At that point, Kevin, Kerry and obviously all his troubles with losing his foot and wrestling in the WWE with one foot and the prosthetic, which nobody at that point knew about. Um, and I, I don't know whether Fritz would have been able to stop Kerry anyway. That's going to be the question, but... Trust me, life is full of what ifs. Um, and you know, especially over passing away, um, it says that there's a lot of what ifs that you, you ask yourself. Um, another topic for another time. Um, before I, I want to kind of wrap this up, I don't want to make this too, too long. Uh, again, also, Jim Cornette is right about the Von Erics um, saying, uh, saying that they. There is potentially two legacies that the Von Erichs have. There is the legacy of them being great wrestlers and great performers. And having great matches, as I said, great feuds with the likes of the Fabulous Freebirds. But also the tragedies that happen. Like you said, the WWE you know, documentary is the triumph and tragedy of world class championship wrestling. You could really deem it the triumph and tragedies of the Von Erichs. Because they have those two legacies. and. They're intertwined. It's really one legacy. It's really both intertwined. They had great career and great matches. Kerry winning the NWA Championship from Ric Flair and the Parade of Champions after David's passing. And also the Kerry eventually taking his own life and Kevin now being the only brother left. It's, it's the one legacy and it's two perspectives. Uh, but still... It's, it's very difficult to judge, to judge it. Um, they say history will judge it, but I, I, I'd say Kevin, I just want to wrap this up, Kevin says, don't feel sorry for me because I think I'm the luckiest man in the world, but apologies to Kevin, I think you have to feel for him. Uh, say losing all his brothers, his father had brain cancer and that amazing, you know, having his father who was suffering from brain cancer and uh, point a gun at him as well and that's not the story I think I talked talk about earlier about Kevin being saved by being well known and that's a completely different situation than the shot which you hear about and Kevin getting out of there because he was in fear that his dad might shoot him 
just due to the brain cancer. Um, I think you have to feel sorry for Kevin a lot, but you, 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 to, you, if you, I think if you don't feel sorry for Kevin, then you're not basically human because you have to feel for what he's been through, uh, and you know, and then he's, he lives a secluded life in Hawaii now, and he's got his son Ross and Marshall who are in the wrestling business. Don't know how far exactly they'll go in it. Um, last I heard they work, they do have some promise, but I've not really heard much about them lately. Uh, really kept an eye on the like an American independent scene, but um, you do feel for for him a, a, a little bit. And I think if you're not human, you've got to be human. If you're not, if you're not feeling a little bit at least for Kevin, if you know the story, if you learn the story of the one Eric, then you're not human because you have to feel for him a little bit. Um, for what he's been through, what his life has been like. Um, so, Dark Side of the Ring, the fourth episode about the Mon Eric, is a really good episode. As I said, um, when the opportunity, because um, I kind of geo blocked um, a little bit, if I could have the opportunity, I'll watch these episodes and then after the. I think there's two more episodes. Gino Hernandez, who's um, talked about a little bit in this episode, and The Fabulous Mool, I think, are the last are the remaining two episodes that are coming up and when I get the chance to watch them I'll make a video on that as well but certainly The Last of One Eric's another good episode and these kind of episodes, these kind of things that even though I said wrestling journalists and fans have poured over these subjects before if you're a young wrestling fan or trying to educate yourself in the history of professional wrestling these are the kind of things you need to watch. Vice on the Dark Side of the Ring uh, these are the kind of things you need to watch and to learn, educate. There's always young wrestling fans. Some may not know or care about wrestling history, but there are always going to be ones that come up and want to know about what happened in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the years before um, the current day modern products and the modern superstars and the days before the globalness of WWE. These are the kind of things that I would certainly encourage those type of fans interested in that kind of stuff uh, to sit down and watch.